Hello and welcome back to Fred in the Shed. Now, a while ago, for those of you that follow the channel, you'll remember that I did introduce a very cheap and small mag loop antenna, which I was said I was going to try and get working on the 11 meter CB band. And true to my word, I have been working away with this in the background. Now, I thought at first this would be a simple review and test, probably a 15 minute video, but it did turn out to be a lot more involved in that. In fact, this is now going to spread over three videos and then there will be one final review video. But I did keep the camera rolling whilst I was struggling with this and I'd like to bring you along for the trip. So hopefully you'll stick with this series of three videos. There will be a gap uh, between the videos because I've got other stuff I want to put up. But anyway, here is some um, part one when at this stage I really thought it was gonna be very easy. So I introduced the loop and we have a look at it. We set it up and I'll show you how it works. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you stick with the series. Just remember, if you're not subscribed, perhaps drop a sub and put the bell notification on and then you'll have notice when these videos do come up on the channel over the following weeks. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to Fred in the Shed. I'm up in the Radio Shack and on this video, a review of this very cheap QRP magnetic loop antenna from Banggood. If you're a regular on the Fred in the Shed channel, you'll know by now that I'm a pure 11 meter CB guy, mostly sideband. Yeah, I do know I do use HF equipment and I do appreciate that some of you have an issue with that. I do respect your opinion. If you wanna just um, leave a comment, we can discuss that in the comments. So I've steered away from Magloop antennas, mostly because of the price. They're aimed pretty much at ham radio operators and consequently the price has been quite high. Even for a receiving antenna, they're quite expensive, let alone a QRP transmitting antenna. When I first saw the price of this magnetic loop antenna on Banggood, I had to do a double take. £69.91 UK price. It is incredibly good value. I did check other UK sites such as Amazon and it's twice that price. So at the moment, as I'm making this video in June 2023, Banggood have got this at a killer price. Even though this is an extremely good value loop antenna, I did feel a slight bit of disappointment when I opened the box because there's no instructions at all. Nothing to tell you how to put this together. Even just a basic photocopied A4 sheet, um, let you know what the controls do, there's a switch. and I mean, it would, have been, it would have made things a little bit easier. I've never owned a loop antenna before. It does look fairly basic how it goes together, I can see that. But I do feel a simple instruction sheet would have been a good thing. In fairness, they have tried to supply you with everything to get you started with the loop. Straight out of the box, you have a coil here of RG174 coaxial cable with two female BNC plugs. I don't know how long this is. Um, when I've unrolled it later on, I'll put it up on the, on the screen there. Personally, I think this is probably just about okay for receiving. As far as transmitting goes, um, I'll be replacing this with simple RG58. I've got a pack of connection plugs here. We have two right angle elbows there, female to male BNC, and a small adapter, which is a male BNC to a female SMA. Next bag contains the main controls for the loop antenna, two variable capacitors, the top coupling capacitor, this is for the frequency tuning. The bottom one, of course, that's gonna be your impedance matching. Um, it's in CB terms, it will be just a matcher. That's how we're going to adjust the SWR. They say this will tune down to 1.2 SWR. I think up on 11 meters, I've got a feeling it's gonna be a little bit higher than that. Um, I'm hoping for about 1.5 something like that. And then we have another little box, which I assume looks like a ballon. So I just think, again, this will be for the impedance matching to try and bring this in at roughly about 50 ohms, which is what the radio will be looking for. And then finally, we have the self resonating induction loop itself. Must admit that seems quite nice, uh, quite nice quality. So I think what we do now, we'll just run through some basic specs of this mag loop antenna, and then we'll take it downstairs and we'll get it set up. 
The tuning range of this antenna on HF is 5 all the way up to 30 megahertz. They say the power input is a maximum of 20 watts on SSB. Um, I think that's pushing things a little bit. Personally, I won't be running 20 watts into the antenna. I think I'll stick to probably a maximum of 10 watts. The antenna is also tunable to 110 to 150 megahertz, so you can receive the aircraft band and also apparently resonant on the VHF on 400 to 450. So that covers the 446 PMR band. Have the loop set up now. Very easy to set up. It forms its own circle, approximately 70 centimeters across and just got it on a cheap tripod here. Of course, this loop it's going to be directional it's going to work very much like a beam so it's, it helps if you can rotate it around on that axis the loop material itself it, it has like a corrugated bendable plastic you can straighten it out you could get a perfect loop but I don't think you really need to worry I fitted the su supplied ballon there and um, yeah, you get, I mean, you get a lot of this one RG174, five meters, which is extremely generous. I'll be using this just for a receive test connected onto my Noelec dongle there with an uh, SMA converter. And uh, as I say, I, I, I've got to find out how to use this. Never used one of these before, so I just need to get a feel for the controls. Do a receive test on the laptop. And then later on in the video, I will, I will set this up in the garden and I will try to get a contact on it. I'm not sure if I'll succeed on this video. I'm quite conscious that this video is going to run a long time. Just for this receive test, I'm just using the antenna indoors. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you use one of these indoors, to be honest. It might work, it might not. I understand people use these on balconies, on flats and things like that. That's fine. Now, with any antenna that you're using... You don't particularly want to be very close to it when you're transmitting. This is more relevant on a loop antenna, antenna because a lot of high voltages are created around the loop with the RF power. So you don't want to be close to it. You don't want to touch it because you can get quite a shock. If you do set one of these up indoors, make sure people are aware. Kids, animals, nowhere near the uh, antenna when you're using it. So just be a little bit careful with these antennas. As I mentioned, up in the shack, this little switch, we have this up for the 40 meter band, and then we switch it down for 20 meters, all the way to 11 meters. So as you can hear there, the antenna's picking up shortwave quite nicely indoors. Now let me just show you what happens when we adjust that top tuning dial. Just keep an eye on the display. So at the moment I've got this turned down to its minimum setting. Now as I turn this round, if, if you watch the waterfall, which I'll bring up on the screen, you'll see it increase. There you go. And then it just sort of goes off the boil a little bit as I turn that round. And you'll see it on the waterfall, the increase in the gain now. I'll just turn it back and then it goes then it goes down again so what you want to do when you're receiving and also when we get around to the transmitting is you want to turn this until you're getting the maximum amount of gain and then you know that the antenna is on frequency you could do this with a antenna matcher like a little uh, nano or something like that or MJI wherever they are that would probably be better but you can do it by ear on a CB radio, which I hope to do later. But it does help to have a spectrum display. There you go, I'll turn it back up now. It's quite sensitive, but these little variable caps, they're, they're actually they're, they're quite nice. They're, they're pretty linear. They, um, they do feel decent quality. And I say, it, you just kind of get a knack for it. Unfortunately, there's no radio propagation coming in. So I can't receive, <laughs> I can receive shortwave, and it's picking up shortwave fine, but I just can't receive anything on the, uh, on the handband, so I just have to wait for another day. 
but yeah that, that's basically the tuning uh, quite quite nice and impressive quite um quite decent decent controls there it does feel quite good for 65 pounds it's quite impressive really compared to some of the things i've tested set up now in the garden and i think this would be a typical mobile dx setup with a tripod and the loop safety wise you don't want to be too close to the loop when it's transmitting there's quite a lot of rf comes off the loop some of the, some people use these indoors for transmitting i wouldn't recommend that i think you want a good four or five foot away from the loop there but there it is now also you've got to consider it it's, it's only a small loop that's never going to replace the sensitivity and the performance of a full 18 foot base station antenna but hopefully we can get something radio i'm going to use uh, for this experiment is uh, Macom EM27 it's a, it's a 27 stroke 97 spec radio so that it's only uh, FM UK band and FM Euro band but uh, it's got no, it's also got no SWR protection so I've got to be a little bit careful but hopefully I won't uh, damage it start with I've got the switch on the downward position there so that's for the uh, 11 meters and I've got the two controls set dead center so firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little tune of this control now it's very difficult because I've just got to use my ears I haven't got a scope if you had a spectrum scope you would see it lift up and down so I'm just going to tune this to see if I can hear the static increase and decrease and uh, I'll see if I can get this as best I can I'm going to be using the ballon that came with the radio just to get the impedance of 50 ohms and then we've got some good old RG58 for this test which should be absolutely fine and that's straight into the back of a very basic cheap SWR meter. It is a bit difficult without having some visual interpretation but I know you probably can't hear it on, on camera but it seems better as I go towards the bottom of the scale there. I'm going to try the SWR now so we've got this set in the upright position we can go either way and hopefully that will get us a baseline. I want to get the SWR below the red sector on the meter get it nice and safe. So the only problem with using a loop antenna is that every time you change frequency you have to go back to the antenna and retune it. Right, I'm going to check this WR now. I'm going to um, go down to channel 1 on the UK FM and then we have to calibrate the SWR meter so let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see that, that was very very high, almost um, off the scale, so it's quite a bit of adjustment we're going to have to do to get that uh, into the safe band. I'm going to try going this way, so we're just going to put that all the way round now to the maximum, just check the SWR, see if that's uh, lower or higher. Going to recalibrate again. Yeah, and that's uh, that's still off the scale. So we go the other way on the setting. It's going to recalibrate the meter again. And uh, okay, well that's gone down, but that's still an SWR of ten, which is quite high, isn't it? Let me have a little play with it and see if I can get it any lower. See if I can get it down to its lowest setting. We can't use that, that's, that's dangerous. So I've been playing around with this for a few minutes now and the SWR is still incredibly high. I can get it down to about eight, which is exceptionally high. And this is with these controls fully jammed over on the left here. It's like with the SWR control, it feels like if I had another 15 or 20 degrees, I might be able to tune it in because the SWR is starting to drop down and then you run out of adjustment. One thing I might just try, let's, I'll try just removing this 50 ohm ballon 
to make sure there's nothing shorting out inside that and then we'll give it another go at the radio. So this is with that button removed and in theory this should make it even worse because that was causing a match. Is that the meter? Yeah, look, that's um, over at nine. So that balloon is slightly reducing it, but it's still incredibly high. So there you go. So I'm not going to pretend that I'm not a little bit disappointed. I was hoping to make this all in one video, even perhaps get a contact with the guys on the 305 using this antenna, but it's not going to happen on this video. The SWR just too high and as I said it, it just feels that this bottom control needs a little bit more adjustment it starts to come down it runs out of adjustment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the supplier and I'm going to ask for their advice it might be possible that it, you can go inside and you can adjust this bottom variable capacitor to bring it into tune it should they did say it should tune up to 10 meters so 28 megs it's not doing that, it's, it's definitely uh, falling a lot shorter than that. I think I'm going to bring this part one video to a close here. We're about the 16 minute mark, so it is a long video. So as you heard there, I had worked out that there is something wrong with the tuning. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, because in part two, without giving too much away, I will be going inside the tuning box of this antenna and having a go see if I can get the antenna to resonate on the 11 meter CB band so that's all going to be coming up in the next video but as always on this video thanks for your view time stay safe and of course I'll catch you on the next one cheers guys